In this tutorial, we are going to set up vegetation, such as trees, grass, bushes, and various foliage. So let's start with the trees. First, you want to head over to the Terrain tab on the rollout bar and click on Vegetation. Through here, you'll set up all of your vegetation that you need for your map. So what you want to do is you want to click on Add Vegetation Category, which is the fourth icon down. And let's name ours going to name this trees click OK so we have our vegetation category set up and now we need to add the models that will be in this category so go ahead right click on the category and choose add object window will pop up asking you which objects do you want to add to that category so if we go up a couple of folders you'll find all of the vegetation objects under natural folder and right in here we have bushes, rocks, trees, vegetation, water. So let's go into trees. In here we have few folders that we can choose any of the objects from. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the vegetation folder. And choose the first one, aspect. And in here we can browse through, take a look at what each one of these objects are. And we can begin to add them. So I'm going to add a couple of objects from here. I'm going to add the first one. And I'm going to hold down control and add another one. So um, you can add as many objects that you want. But to keep it simple, I'm going to add just two. And we're going to set up a few properties and paint them on our terrain. So I select a couple, click open. And they have been added to our tree category. Now you can always add more by going to tree and add object. And you can add extra ones. And you can always delete any of the objects from this category by selecting it and hitting delete. By selecting each object within the category you have properties show up. We will take a look at these properties in just a bit. But let's begin painting. You can paint the entire category and all the objects within that category or you can paint individual chosen objects. So first let's paint the entire category. So I'm going to select trees, it's going to select everything inside that category. I'm going to click on paint objects and I'm going to set my brush radius to a little bit higher. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to left click and paint. And you can see it positioned quite a few trees in here and they're very uniformly positioned. There's, uh, uh, It doesn't look good. So what we need to do is we need to go inside these categories and we need to set up some properties. So select the object that you want to configure for the properties. Select uh, the second one. And then here inside parentheses, uh, these are how many objects have been painted onto the terrain. So let's go ahead and modify some of these properties. So in here, you can set up the size, size variation, random rotation of the objects. Let's uh, click on this. You can align to terrain. You can use terrain color. I'm going to switch this off. You can allow indoors, so if you have some objects, it will place vegetation inside interiors. You can allow some bending, so if I set this to 5, actually it's uh, the lower trees, you can see that they swing in the wind. Let's choose this one, so you can see the effect. Set it to 2, so let's scroll down. You can enable hideable, which is used for AI to hide behind and will block the AI's point of view. You can also enable player hideable which will block the ability of AI seeing you if you hide behind those objects. You can uh, paint on brushes so if we enable this we can paint on top of brushes that we placed. We can also modify the density of these trees. So let's modify the density to maybe uh, 5 meters apart. So density value is in meters. So if we begin to paint now, uh, it, they will be spread out. Elevation minimum and maximum will allow you to paint on certain elevation range. And you can also set uh, uh, the slope of where these trees will be painted. So if we want to paint on a very steep slope, or if we don't want to paint them, so we can set this to 30. It will not paint anything above 30. You can set cast shadows on the objects. You can set up level of detail distance ratio. 
as, as the player moves away from them, the trees will change to a lower res polygon count. You can also modify max view distance ratio uh, to where the trees will disappear at a certain range. So if we set this to 0.1, as the player gets closer, they pop in the view and they pop back out. This is very useful for optimizing your map and getting rid of some of the objects not being rendered, especially if the player doesn't see them in view. The last three are the layers that we have set up from previous tutorials and this will allow you to spread all the trees and the vegetation on the entire layer. And if you want to paint out the objects that you've placed, just hold on control and left click to paint them out. And if you want to paint out the rest, you have to select those objects on the layer or select the category to paint them out. Also, after you've painted some trees, you can always delete any of these objects from the category and this will also delete the vegetation from the terrain. So let's go ahead and delete these and all the trees will disappear. Now let's go through a very basic workflow of painting some vegetation and I'm also going to give you how to place the trees individually for more precise positioning and placement. So let's go ahead, let's set up a new category again. I'm going to name this trees. Click OK. Right click, add objects. And this time I'm going to select Aspen F and G dead. Select these, click open. And then here uh, I'm going to paint these to see what they look like. OK. Then I'm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up size variation. For the first tree, uh, size variation I'm going to set up F5. See what that look like. Gives a little nice variation of size. And scrolling down, I'm going to set up density to about 25. Slope max, I'm going to set up to 40. And let's see what that looks like. Uh, that's a little bit better. And let's reduce the brightness. Let's put it down to 0.7. Another option, uh, let's click on align to terrain. See what that looks like. And it does not look good. So we want to switch that off. Now let's uh, give a little bit more bending. Let's give it uh, a 2. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe let's do a 3. A little bit more windy. And let's paint in the other tree. Let's go up and modify some of these properties. Let's give uh, size variation to 0.3. And let's see what that looks like. Let's uh, give density a large number. Let's give it uh, about a 50. Slope max, I'm going to reduce this to 30. Let's see what this looks like. Give size to a little bit more, maybe 2. Something like this. So let's start painting inside here. A little variation of the trees. Now I don't like how these look, so we can replace these trees. Let's go up, right click, and let's replace object. I choose something a little bit better. Let's choose some bushes. I'm going to choose Aspen D and it's going to replace all the objects that I didn't like and replace them with a different vegetation object. So now we can uh, select the entire category and let's paint in some trees. And let's jump inside and see what this looks like. Let's talk about how you can place one single tree uh, for better, more precise placement of vegetation. So once you begin to paint your entire terrain, sometimes you'll need to place certain trees manually with more precision. And to do so, make sure you switch off the paint objects so you're not painting the objects anymore. And by selecting any of these vegetation objects you have set up, if you hold down shift, left click, this will place that one object inside your scene. And if you need to scale it, just hold down Alt and left click, drag. Up and down to resize that object. So let's place the maple tree. Select it first, hold down Shift, left click, drag it, position it where you want it. And then once you still have it enabled and selected, hold down Alt and move up and down. If you deselect the tree, you can always select it back up again by marquee selecting it and holding down ALT again moving up and down to resize it. 
So this way you can really quickly place various trees with the same settings enabled in here by holding down shift, selecting it, holding down shift and just placing the trees really quick and it will keep all the properties in here and still add some variety but this way you'll have more precision of the vegetation placement. To set up grass is very similar to setting up trees so let's set up a new vegetation category named as grass and add object. So let's add a grass object. Let's go back up. Let's go to meadows and let's choose a grass object. Let's choose marsh grass C. See what this looks like. So let's go ahead and paint and we need to do some modification to it. So let's go into size variation 0.5 uh, maybe size 2.8 it's a little bit better. Let's do 0.6 and point and see what this looks like. Let's take a look at density. 0.5, a little bit closer together. And here we are. Looks pretty good. And you can see that uh, blending it with some other grass will add a nice variety effect. But for now we're just going to concentrate on one type of grass. So let's go in a little open area and uh, paint some of this area in. So as you can see we can use the same properties for grass as we do for trees because they're treated as a vegetation object. So there's nothing much different from setting up trees to setting up grass. Now for grass we can scroll down and use on terrain layers and we can position all this grass on the entire terrain. So if we click on grass layer which right now covers the entire terrain and this will place grass everywhere. Another option that we want to take a look at which which is very specific to grass is inside the material editor. So if we select the grass go right click and go to objects material marsh plants material open. So let's open this up and click on grass and the first thing you want to notice is the shader make sure that the shader for grass is always set to vegetation and surface type is set to grass. Now if we scroll down on the right hand side here we have shader generation parameters. We want to take a look at a few key things. So let's zoom in so we can see the grass and one thing we want to enable is click on grass. This will give a little bit better visual display for the grass we also want to click on fit to terrain. This will better set up the grass to conform the terrain and give a more realistic visual quality to it. So let's click off of it and let's take a look how this looks in game. So this is a little bit better way to set up the grass than just simply adding it to a new object to a new category and not modifying any properties. So remember, right clicking, go into object material and taking a look at the shader generation parameters and seeing how this looks. We can also go into some of these properties and take a look at how the grass will look according to some of the object parameters. Another thing is if you're using a procedural way to generate your grass where it's placed on the entire layer, you may not want to have cast shadows for the grass. Uh, this will slow down your map but it is still better to manually paint your grass into the terrain for the best visual look of your map. And the last important window that we want to take a look at for vegetation is database view. So if we go to view, open view pane, click on database view and here we can switch over to vegetation. This will show you the categories and all the objects that you have currently in the scene and by selecting it you can modify any of these properties but in here you have a little bit more control and detail information on all of your vegetation objects within the scene.